Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you about all the wonderful things that are happening for your weekend and beyond. Um, I don't know why I said weekend, but here's it is Wednesday, um, March 7th, and I'm here to tell you about all wonderful March 7th news and events that are going on here in the city of Missoula. We'll kick things off with a little bit of local um, news. Um, Bridges are going to be all the rage for the next uh, two to three years, ending with Russell being the last, if at all. Uh, 2015 October was the meeting about the Russell Bridge at Burn Street Bistro, uh, and that's when they were talking about what they're going to do with the bridge, but now it's 2018. But of course, anyways, other bridges over the Backfoot River will be replaced on I-90. They are mov not moving. Uh, they are not uh, moving, but the new bridges will uh, basically do without the pillars that uh, support the bridge and they will be going to a new uh, kind of like a bridge design project over a well. So instead of threading your needle, needle being your inner tube through the uh, un on the uh, bridge underpass area. Um, but of course, but but if, but upon approval by the State Fish Wildlife Commission, the um, intermittent uh, closures would limit floating, swimming, uh, wading, boating, and uh, the like from the way station fishing access site downstream of the Clark Fork River. The I-90 uh, Blackfoot Bridge Replacement Project is just one of many projects in the Missoula area slated to get underway when the snow melts. Um, in state news, University of Montana Professor Steve Running, who's working with, uh, contributed uh, to a Nobel Prize in his 2007 for his work on the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, spoke Monday at last uh, chance Audubon's National History Lecture Series at the University of Montana w Will Wild Education Center. Center. Mm, this year's series focused on the uh, wildfire and running's um, t talk ranged from the current and predicted impacts of climate change in a few potential solutions as wildfire seasons become longer and hotter. Montana has seen an un uptick in average temperatures of about 2 degrees Fahrenheit in the last 50 years, um, th while per uh, participation has stayed largely the same. At the same time, temperature at the extremes, the absolute coldest and absolute warmest temperatures of the years have shifted upwards to about 10 degrees for the absolute low, with more days falling into the hotter extremes as well. Of course, Steve Running says that the Montana could look like Salt Lake City in terms of temperatures in 2050. Um, many of the uh, um, natural factors come with biomass burning prototypes are still not economiz economically feasible, Running said, and past interest in producing ethanol has run its course. Um, in national news, just um, in one year, uh, overdoses from opioids have jumped about 30% according to the report released Tuesday by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The overall increase in opioid overdoses in hospital emergency rooms between the third quarter of 2016 and 2017 occurred across the nation. Some parts of the country expected, experienced far greater increases than others, while few reported declines the analysis shows. So here's a graph that I got from NPR showing um, from the uh, CDC. So here's the opioid uh, increase rate right here. So back in October uh, um, 2006, uh, based on the quarter three average, quarter three in 2017 has increased. Um, looks like uh, the biggest increase in the areas is the Midwest. Um, it looks and uh, Northwest is 21.4 percent. Midwest is tw uh, wait wait wait. So this is the current state uh, overage of. Um, this is per 10,000 emergency hospital visits. So th if you do the math right, it's uh, um, around there. So, oh, sorry, sorry about that. Uh, I forgot I didn't have a monitor real quick. Uh, so I'll have to get that graph to you guys a little bit later. So the largest regional increase occurs in the Midwest, which saw a 69.7% jump in opi opioid overdoses. According to the report, the jump was driven in part by the 109% increase in Wisconsin. Overdoses increased 40.3% in the West, 21.3% in the Northeast, 20.2% in the Southwest, and 14% in the Southeast. These overdoses are related to emergency room visits and are not the deaths and the OD uh, that occur outside. 
uh, fentanyl, which has been flooding the country in the recent years. Common side effects include nausea, constipation, sleepiness, and confusion. Fentanyl is the uh, main ingredient in opioids. Serious side effects may include a decreased effort in breath, respiratory depression, uh, serotonin syndrome, low, low blood pressure, and of course addiction. It is about 75 times stronger than morphine for any given amount and may be as much as 10,000 times stronger than morphine depending on the doses and forms. Uh, this analysis was based uh, uh, on about 91 million emergency room visits that occurred between July 2016 and September 2017, including 142,000 visits that were suspected of opioid overdoses. And Poyor has the story, and you can look this up along with that the graph as well. So I'm going to throw it to a quick little video for you guys about uh, bicycle safety as things are starting to warm up in the Missoula area. So stay with me, and I'll, I'll be able to get some more videos for you guys. Sergeant Greg Amison with the Missoula Police Department. I'd like to talk a little bit about bicycles riding on the sidewalks in the city of Missoula, which we see a lot because Missoula is a very bike friendly town. I would just like to let bicyclists know that they do have to yield to pedestrians on the sidewalk safely because they travel faster than a pedestrian, so they do have to do that in a safe manner. And then when you get to a crosswalk, you are actually required to slow your bicycle down to what would be called a pedestrian pace, and you cannot begin crossing until it's safe to do so. Hey guys, welcome back. And now let's show you guys a little bit of uh, weather that's happening in the city of Missoula. So it is currently 21 degrees outside. Your high is going to be 48. Your low is going to be 30. Uh, Thursday, your high is going to uh, stay pretty much the same, but your low is going to go a little bit warmer as lows into 35 degrees. So we're going to start seeing less and less uh, freezing temperatures happening overnight. Uh, Friday, you can expect temperatures to go about the same pretty much going on. And I, of course, I did take a look even further beyond the weekend, and we're going to be seeing 50 degree temperatures starting next week. So uh, we look forward to the seeing that for sure. Um, let's uh, let's see. What else do I need to talk about before I move on? I just want to give you a couple announcements uh, in terms of MCAT. MCAT is doing focus groups coming up in April. If you are, are an organization and you represent different parts of the community in terms of business, um, nonprofits, school systems, education, um, parent groups, um, anything, you go to our focus groups tab that is located at the very uh, top left hand corner of our website. You click on focus groups and you click here to sign up. It'll tell you exactly what you need to know. We're looking for local government staff, department heads, state elected officials for our first meeting happening on uh, Tuesday, April 3rd from 2 to 4 p.m. Then we're looking for more of the alt arts and culture type of folk uh, happening between 6 and 8 p.m. on the same date. Um, then, of course, we need some community, nonprofit, civic, and faith service organizations uh, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. noon on Wednesday, April 4th. 3 p.m. to 5 p.m., that's where we're looking for schools, university, teachers, administration, staff, parents, and students in terms of those as well. So those are some of the um, MCAT things that we want to talk about. Um, Another big thing that we really wanted to um, harp on is our Spring Flix Camp, which is happening March 26th through the 30th. And it, it is a nice, wonderful camp that allows kids to create and make their own videos, whether that be stop animation, live action, and all that in between. We'll teach them some broadcasting things, some MCAT things. It's a good way to get uh, a good start on media arts. So uh, I have a nice little short uh, video um, highlighting all those uh, um, all those and more. So when I come back, I'll talk about some city council. So stay with me. Spring break is just around the corner. While some of you get to go on vacation, MCAT lets your kids get away from reality to join us March 26th through the 30th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. for only $150. Kids will create and share their own works of media arts ranging from reality to fantasy. Kids will learn how to shoot, edit, record voiceovers, and make their stories come to life. How do kids play with these things? Find out more by logging on to MCAT.org and clicking on our Spring Flix Camp to sign up. You have fallen down. Take my hand in friendship. Well, guys, welcome back. Now it's time for some city council. It's a short city council, and I'm talking about some things that are happening with the uh, library and a couple things that are happening in terms of building a new surgery center for through Montana Bone and Joint. The applicant's purpose to construct a new uh, two-story, 23-hour ambulance surgery center building, which is classified as a hospital use and is permitted use. Uh, the existing Missoula Bone and Joint building 
is 43,307 square feet. The new uh, surgery, surgery center will be 31,949 square feet. Um, enterprise commercial uses are defined as uh, developments that contain more than 30 thousand square feet on gross floor area whether contained on a single building or contained within multiple buildings with a single development site so basically gary wells from missoula bone and joint says this new surgery center will be a very accessible for people so here he is we'll be able to do outpatient joints and spine surgery on a much more convenient uh, level than at a hospital setting uh, with a 23-hour stay um, our our um, surgery center is uh Medicare uh, certified, so it's under uh, very high quality scrutiny and standards, which gets uh, approved every uh, approximately every three years. Um, it will be a convenience for our patients in the community, um, being able to perform these procedures in a non-hospital setting, um, shorter wait times, uh, more one-on-one -on -one care, um, and higher patient satisfaction in outpatient surgery centers than. Hospital settings, uh, hospital settings, and a significant cost savings. Um, surgery centers uh, are somewhere between often 50 to 60 percent less expensive than hospital-based uh, procedures. Um, so we expect to uh, uh, add that to our uh, repertoire uh, of what we do already, um, with more parking, more landscaping, and uh, better insulation to the building. All right, so um, another quote I got was from our very own um, city council member, Brian Von Losberg, who thinks this is a good idea. Uh, there's a, a great opportunity with this to really model great landscaping with natives and uh, such in the area. Um, I, I hope that happens. Um, and also, I think there's an element of energy efficiency here, so lots of good things to, to support and uh, happy to support the project. Okay, many of the uh, pro uh, the projects that were brought up around here was um, curb and sidewalk, uh, stri stripping and striping in terms of stuff. Of course, this new site uh, had, that just had to go through the city for approval, which went through pretty streamlined. Um, the next big thing I'm talking about is the library. Uh, one of the things that the library uh, was talking about during the um, certain committee meetings is that they wanted more of a bullet they, they didn't want the idea of having a boulevard because um, uh, with um, the trees that would be there and then the, of course you have the grassy areas the biggest problem with being doing that would be access for people who are ADA or people who are just getting out of cars with their children being able to basically transport from their car to that and also like in terms of snow removal they you know like uh, well not snow removal but snow plowing the snow has to be put somewhere and a lot of times they end up being put on the boulevard so which usually becomes um, obstructive uh, to the uh, location of some of these cars and whatnot and also uh, it's a big major project along the way uh, there's a lot of uh, things happening library is basically doing a, a land swap with their next door neighbor um, so the uh, old library the new library is going to basically be across the street which is also across the street from um, MCT. So here is Jew Larson, Development Services, and he talks about what still needs to be done in terms of the site. Uh, new construction. During the agency comment period, Northwest Energy provided agency comment stating that the existing overhead power lines in the 20-foot alley uh, would need to be relocated as well as new public utility easements uh, recorded in a timely manner. And in addition, the city engineer provided comments stating that public access easements, um, public access and utility easements may be necessary for relocated public utilities. So a recommended condition of approval requires the applicant to record all necessary public utility easements within 180 days uh, of the resolution to vacate the subject right away or the right away vacation will become null and void. All right, so that was Jew Larson from Developmental Services. Uh, the next quote I have is uh, also Jew Larson where he talks about the plans for any upcoming public meetings and how people can get put their input there as well. The library site um, that the applicants and the Missoula Public Library are comfortable with and wanting to move forward with this evening or next week. I apologize, I didn't note this earlier. There was a notification snafu, and tonight is the beginning of the public hearing. We will hold it open until next Monday, so there will be no decision this evening. I should have started with that. Um, so again, the, the applicants are proposing a minimum seven-foot-wide curbside sidewalk on all frontages 
uh, um, including these areas, but those will be from building frontage to curbside sidewalk. So those will all be hardscaped areas there. So this is just a little bit more zoomed in in hopes that you can see it a little better. Uh, this is the north portion of the property and the applicants are proposing full hardscape area from the edge of building uh, to the angled in parking on Main Street as well as a bus drop off location uh, on the west side of the building which will also be kind of a little pedestrian plaza gathering space that was this is the proposed site for uh, school school bus drop off where kids would be coming for the day and so it would be a large gathering space. Of course, among the uh, many uh, challenges that the uh, public library has faced, uh, the biggest one is those boulevards. One of the options that came under scrutiny when it came um, was the boulevard because on parks and rec, they wanted to create uh, more areas to provide natural shade and trees and more of that, m less of the being near the uh, traffic. So the whole idea is that since you're next to a road, they want to be able to have some kind of point of being able to avoid that kind of stuff. Uh, but of course, one of the... Um, issues that came around is that the library director, uh, she mentioned that um, they have a lot of uh, young parents who come down to the places and they want to be able to have street parking so they can have access to their cars right away and be able to take out their um, their children and uh, carriages and stuff like that so they can have access to the library pretty easily without worrying about the, uh, the rough uh, grassy uh, boulevard terrain um, and basic access to the building as well. So. Um, the media will continue uh, next Monday to talk about uh, this and many more topics. Um, if you want to watch this meeting and other meetings, you go to ci.missoula.mt.us. There wasn't much going on there for the city uh, council meetings. Um, there's really, uh, it's pretty much everything is uh, being streamlined. I just want to keep you updated on what's going on with the city. Uh, in the brief, this was a fairly short meeting, uh, about an hour, which is short for city council, just so you guys know. Um, ci.missoula.mt.us. That's where you can get your information. You go to your government and you can watch meetings live and more. But of course, MCAT is live right now with those meetings on channel 190 adjacent from my show going on right now. And of course, if you're watching this in the afternoon with my repeat between 2 and 3 uh, p.m., you can also... Uh, Maybe there might be another meeting going on depending upon community meetings because sometimes community meetings start as early as now and go all the way until 5 p.m. in the afternoon depending upon if it's they're talking about admin and finance, they're talking about um, budget committee meeting, and if they're talking about community of the whole. Community of the whole really can get long if, if they have a lot to talk about, especially with the uh, transition of the uh, Missoula Water Company. So anyways, um, that kind of concludes everything with the city council. I'm going to throw things over to a nice little video. This is uh, m may not be the last video of Behind the Basketball, and this is some nice behind the scenes of some of the teens having some fun um, with some behind the scenes stuff uh, during one of our basketball games that we live stream for you guys on MCAT. Blue guy or the ring? Rowan. Oh, this is the remover. Who cares about that? Yes. Kill him. Who's, who's blue? I think I, I thought I was blue. What's the uh, what's the objective We're of this game? Dying. <laughs> yeah, but what's the objective? We're going to die. We're saving people, okay? What's uh, the objective? I'm not sure. Put gloves on. Wow! Just like uh, um, what Ed, um, Edward Wright. <laughs> Yeah. American Sniper baby scene. You can edit this into your video American as an overlay really while we're talking about this because exactly if you look at that baby, it is completely and utterly fake. <laughs> Extreme close up, go red. <laughs> is it just like the uh, it's Twilight it's baby? I don't even want to. No, forget no, Twilight. no, no. This is a, just a doll. <laughs> oh, Twilight's baby is CGI. This is just and that's more real. Than oh, wait. This. Cue close up and red and shake on the um, Twilight baby. <laughs> About what are you filming now? Just I'm not filming anything. Why not? Because there's no action. Right. What are you doing? Bro, film the action. Good job. <laughs> this January. summer, January 1st. Wait, summer. look at that moon. It must be terribly rendered. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can literally recall everything. All memes from Scott, all you're just going to have to give me a list of good memes, and then I'll do those. All right. I'll try my best. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hi, welcome to the airport. Hi, welcome. This is Benny. Off to Croatia. This is our film crew. Yes. Hello. 
really cheap to film your It is man versus wild. <laughs> We're in a high school. <laughs> where many disgusting teenagers with their hair bones. <laughs> Rowan, say it. Listen, let's no. get this parse party started. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> You're using it now. Yes. I'm going to be perfect. 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 Puffed Cheetos, and then they turn the machine on. No. No. Doritos are bad. They taste bad. Wow, right under our noses, the thief strikes again. Well, would you look at that? It's the Sentinel Spartan. And yeah, he's fearsome. You gotta get a help me fight of that. Alright. Look at him, he's, he's freaking hilarious. The Sentinel Band. <laughs> Are they relatable? Something with um, uh, just variety chops. <laughs> yeah. Boom! What did you think of the game? Um, it was all right. <laughs> hey, what did you think of the game? Is that close? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about you? What did you think of the game? Is that close? Guys, I'm not gonna be here. You dodged a bullet. Why? What was the bullet? Uh, overtime. Overtime was the bullet? Yeah. What was the chamber? Uh, the, my life. <laughs> so what did you think about the game? Hey, hey Scott. I thought it could have possibly gone into overtime. Oh, hey, Scott. <laughs> hey, Scott. Oh, should I go in there with you guys? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Hey, Scott. Here's wait, wait. Way. Where's the... Uh... Oh, so I guess he's walking down the stairs? Yeah. So how what secret is Secret Services? I don't know. Because once you start talking about Secret Services, are they really secret? And can't more like FBI... Do, 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 do. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you need to hit the one. Oh, no one hit a button? Gosh. <laughs> so slow. <laughs> you sit in oh. the Whenever it pops, I go, knee! <laughs> I think I left my coat up there. Oh. Did you? Did you go nap? Do you have a coat? Uh, it's a coat. Yeah, I brought a coat. I'll, I'll I can trade you if you want to go grab it. Oh no, no I see a howl in my jump. Yeah, you'll see it's great. Hey guys, we were recognized as the dancing people. Yes! I know. <laughs> Graham, what you're gonna have to do here, you're gonna have to go da ding, you know? Ran off to get, get to, you have to go da ding, and then it's like, ooh, happiness points in the world went up. Sadness went down. <laughs> get these cameras out of here! <laughs> slow motion, slow motion, slow motion. Slow motion. <laughs> it's my coat! <laughs> the other one is a metaphor for... Death. Don't have one. Don't. <laughs> don't. <laughs> I like to talk in metaphors. Here's the acronyms for don't when you're talking about children. Don't. <laughs> Don't ever. A man with a stutter died in prison. He didn't get to finish his sentence. <laughs> what, what do you guys say, Graham? I mean, you're not Graham, you're Rowan. Graham, Rowan, what you guys say? My name's Rowan. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. <laughs> Bye, guys. And that's all I know. Hey guys, welcome back. Now, 
I'm going to tell you about events that are happening in the city of Missoula. Kicking things off for your Wednesday morning, if you have a kid who wants to uh, learn gymnastics, uh, you got three options. You got Missoula Under Sports Arena. You got Mismo Gymnastics. You got Roots Acro Sports Center. All sorts of wonderful things happening from 9 a.m., 9.30 to about 12. So all sorts of wonderful things happening there. But if you don't want them to do anything physical where they can, might get themselves hurt, then worry about paper cuts by going to the Missoula Public Library for Tiny Tales. Actually, go to the Missoula Food Bank for Tiny Tales. They, they're sponsored it, and it's going to be at Empower Place, which is at the Mo Missoula Food Bank starting at 10.30 a.m. Book Madness is starting at the Big Sky Branch. It's round one. Big Sky's March Madness-style tournament of books returns for another year. 64 book titles will face off against this year's genre like sci-fi, mystery, horror, fantasy, and more. Be sure to vote for your favorites online at www.missoulapubliclibrary.org slash branches slash Big Sky starting March 7th. But of course, if you go to missoulapubliclibrary.org, you can find the link. Um, and you have to... Basically, it's starting today, and uh, be entered to win prizes. You can call the branch at 728-2400, extension 8605, for more information. Hands-on Health um, Spectrum Discovery Center is doing a hands-on health special making activity, Makey Makey. This week, it, Makerspace is Strawbies. Uh, Spe Spectrum is celebrating Women's History Month. Each day, they will feature scientists and will have activities related to their field. Scientist of the day is Ruby uh, High Rose. Um, Makerspace is at the Missoula Public Library as an actual fact. Not the, It's not going to be um, uh, Missoula Food Bank, but it's at the Missoula Public Library and it starts at 12 p.m. and it goes on pretty much all day where you can do some 3D printing. Makerspace is a wonderful place at the Missoula Public Library. It's for all your people who like to build things with your hands or build things with robots. So. Scrabble and Bridge at the Missoula Senior Center starting at 12.30. Um, if you're interested in doing that, you can do that. Uh, Missoula Middle School Writers is at the uh, Missoula Public Library as well. So if you're a kid in middle school who is struggling with writing or want to improve their writing or just want some feedback on your writing in a positive, warm um, environment, go to Missoula Public Library after school. Um, Grief Matters Community Workshop. So if you're grieving, um, the Providence St. Patrick Hospital is the place to be. It's a community conversation about loss and healing, free and open to the public, and it starts at 4.30 p.m. today. Um, Socrates Cafe, or Socrates, is at the Missoula Public Library from 6 to 8 p.m. It is a informal yet intelligent and lively discussion of topics relating to the core areas of philosophy. Participants choose a broad question to explore each of the meaning and spend time turning uh, it inside out, upside down, and occasionally the wrong way round. No previous Philosophical, uh, uh, oh, philosophical, philosophical. Hmm. Sorry, training required. Just bring your nagging doubts and idle thoughts from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Missoula Public Library, and I'm pretty sure they're meeting in the conference room. Uh, tell. Telluride Montana Film on Tour. So Montana Film on Tour brings a selection of culturally rich, adventure-packed, and incredibly inspiring documented films created by the Montana Mountain Film Film Festival every Memorial Day weekend in uh, Colorado. The tour, tour will soon visit Missoula, Montana at the Roxy Theater tonight at 6 p.m. So basically, the films will explore the connection between Mountain Film's mission, using the power of film, art, and ideas to inspire audiences to create a better world. Show kicks off at 7 p.m. with doors opening at 6 p.m. for drinks and a raffle. Um, Global Grizzlies uh, starting at 6.30 p.m. at the University of Montana. This is a global public health series lecture series, and it's a look at Ugandan medicine. So if you're interested in Ugandan showing you the way on medicine, um, it's a meme, but it's also medicine. Um, <laughs> the Global Public Health Lecture Series features health professionals working to improve public health around the world, sharing their experiences and insights weekly during the spring semester. So it's every single week, 6.30 p.m., University of Montana, and it usually is in the Gallagher Business Building, room 123. So you can check it out. The University of Montana students, Andrew Honkin, pre-med, and uh, Tej Rutherford, pre um Dental will talk about what they learned uh, of Ugandan medicine and culture while volunteering in Ugandan hospital as members of UM Global Grizzly Student Group. So, the importance of being earnest, Big Sky High School Auditorium. Big Sky is presenting a show called The Importance of Being Earnest. And um, not earnest p world, but it's... Uh, it's Being Earnest is a play by Oscar Wilde and is presented uh, from March 7th through the 10th at 7.30 p.m., and all tickets are, uh, the door is open at 6 p.m. And, of course, 
it's it's going to be a play that helps benefit the theater program and drama program at the Big Sky High School um, Cafetorium. So among those, if you guys are done with that play and you want to go out and do some trivia, uh, Trivia Beer Suit is going to be the press box. You got some trivia happening at the uh, uh, Silver Slipper. You got... Uh, Let's see. I think there's even more stuff, but of course, if you're interested in doing some karaoke, they got karaoke at Dark Horse, Badlander, Eagles Lodge, and I believe the Sunrise Saloon is doing some um, country karaoke as well. So that basically is everything that you need to know about your Wednesday events. I'll get your Thursday events in a bit, but I am excited to show you a couple new art clips that are going to be airing um, on MCAT, but of course... Um, these are some of the art installations that will be going on until about March 15th, so you still have another week to check these art arts arts out. So this is happening at the Gallery of the Visual Arts, and the Gallery of the Visual Arts usually has art installations um, rotating. It has a revolving door of artists, so you have to be very careful on when you're able to see this because they usually end all of these art installations as soon as they begin. So here is a nice little tease of the Gallery of Visual Arts, but check it out. They're at the Social Science Building at the University of Montana. All right, now it's time for your Thursday events. Of course, today is Wednesday. Um, let me talk about some of the Thursday things that are happening here. And starting as early as Thursday morning, um, of course, NPR did a story on it that I talked about earlier in the show. is about the opioid crisis. As more and more people are getting addicted to opioid medicine-related things, um, Saint pa Saint, uh, Providence St. Patrick Hospital is doing uh, uh, the toll on communities and families talk um, it's uh, with Pamela Gabby, um, Ed, um, Ed D, uh, feature, uh, FT, and Andy McNeil, MA. Uh, and this is no registration required, and this is going to be a talk. And uh, basically, it's it basically it doesn't give me any description on this. It's just an event that's happening in here, and the title is called The Opioid Crisis, The Toll on Communities and Families. This is starting at the Providence St. Patrick Hospital, 7.30 to 8.30 a.m., so you can check that out, and I believe it's going to be one of the conference centers, so you can call them any time to inquire as well. But if you guys are interested in being out, and if you want you and your family uh, to have some family fun time, go to the YMCA starting at 9 a.m. They usually have these events happening intermittently throughout the week. Uh, weekends, they have some good afternoon things as well, but the YMCA is hosting family fun time starting at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Windows 10 at the Missoula Public Library. So Explore the Windows 10 operating system. Topics include basic orientation, managing files, configuring systems, and navigating the internet with Microsoft Edge Browser. So if you are a Mac person and you want to learn, learn Windows 10, you can go to Museum Public Library. But if you already know Windows 10, it's a nice way to kind of update your own learning process as well. But don't be a know-it-all. Um, Montana State Basketball Tournament is happening at 12. 12 noon at the University of Montana. This is all the B school. So this is the state B boys basketball and girls combined tournament. This is double elimination. The tournament will be held at University of Montana Am Center and will begin Thursday, March 8th and go through Saturday, March 10th. And they're expecting 16 teams and over 150 school personnel, coaches, athlete, athletic directors, and around 6,000 spectators. So if you are a student in a B school going to these uh, 
tournaments and stuff like that. It's a good way to find scouts and a good way to be a part of the University of Montana's basketball team. Um, e even if you're in a B school, it's a good way to get exposure in the big city that is Missoula, Montana. Anyways, five-week class. Yep! Thursday, Potter Paradise, Newtown Arts Community Center is hosting a five-week class starting at 2.30 PM, it's after school, so since it's early out Thursdays, um, this is the name of the year to explore clay. Students will have the freedom to play and create in this tactile me medium while learning new techniques and make functional and sculptural treasures. Young artists will bring work home, um, exhibiting talents of slab building, graffito, press molding, and um, Mishmima Inlay. So if I butchered that, I'm sorry. Uh, the Minds Lab Data Collection. Missoula Public Library is looking for kids age three to eight years of age. The Minds Lab is excited to announce that they will be conducting the same some research sessions at the Missoula Public Library from 3 to 5 p.m. and Friday from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. to participants. They're currently looking for kids three to eight years old for their Minds Lab Data Collection starting at 3 p.m. Sounds like it's a uh, Pretty important thing, and it's a good way to get your kid, ages three to eight, to participate. Wild Rising Girls Launch Party. Westsider joined for the International Women's Day, so this month is marks uh, International um, Women's Month, um, and Women's Day is happening at Western Sider at 5 p.m. It is uh, learn about Wild Rising Girls, do-it-yourself flower crown stations, uh, affirm uh, affirmative. Uh, Affirmation, sorry, affirmation stations with uh, Turning the Wheel Missoula, uh, Ethical Chocolates, and Feminine History with the Jen Rankin Peace Center and the Olive Branch. And that's happening at 5 p.m. at the Western Sire. So, um, of course, there are many other uh, places that are happening as well to celebrate International Women's Day. University of Montana is doing a Gilkey Lecture Series presents Caring is Good for Business. It's R2C Group uh, CEO and co-founder Michelle uh, Cardinal. Cardinal has been a prominent voice in the movement to address Portland's homeless epidemic. She will engage in conversation to share the, her honest story and what business goes, goes through when they're grappling homeless with homelessness issue. Cardinal's career spans for more than 25 years in advertising and media. Some of her clients include Peloton, Chewy, Wayfair, and Human Healthcare. This event is free and open to the public, and it's happening Thursday from 5.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. at the University of Montana Gallagher Business Building 106. Adult Soccer, soccer League. So if you want to get into a, an adult indoor soccer league, um, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena is hosting an adult soccer league, and they're offering men's and women's recreational and competitive links, as well as a co-ed recreational and competitive. Um, for more information, the MissoulaIndoor.com, you can call them at 531 Three 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 one. So this is Missoula Indoor Sports Arena starting at 6 p.m. tomorrow night. It's a good way to get involved with the soccer team and it's indoor soccer. So it's it's kind of like soccer, but it, the field's smaller and it's probably a le little easier on some people who are just getting into it, who want to get into soccer without going too far. But it's still extreme depending upon how competitive you are. Um, TGR. C's 10th anniversary celebration. Please join the Tamar Grief Resource Center as they celebrate 10 years of strengthening families in Western Montana. And it's going to be at the Missoula College. It's a no-host bar. Uh, music, special recognition, and donations are always welcome to the Tamar Grief Resource Center, which helps families and um, families and families of and friends of families deal with loss and grief. So it's a good way to celebrate their 10th anniversary celebration at the Missoula College starting at 6.30 p.m. tomorrow night. <coughs> if you're interested in doing some more things, why not go check out Big Sky High School's uh, The Importance of Being Earnest um, and be earnest yourself, um, not P-World, but join them and hang out. So the Missoula Art Museum is doing a um, Caroline Kastner on Juan Quick to See Smith. Um, and it's an art show um, happening at 7 p.m. Uh, tomorrow night as well. They have some open mic stuff happening at um, Green Alternative Dispensary. Middle of Nowhere is going to be the Roxy. The Sunrise Saloon is doing country dance lessons with Kathy Clark. Um, but basically, let's talk about the Missoula Art Museum. Come to the man for an evening of Carol Kastner, curator of the Georgia O'Keeffe Museum and author of Juan Quick to See Smith, an American modernist. Kastner is a former assistant professor of Native American art history at the Arts College of Santa Fe, New Mexico, and earned her PhD from Sanford University. Her research publications in 
uh, curational project, I don't even think that's a real word, uh, focus on <laughs> the diversity of American modernism in honor of Quick to See Smith's Lifetime Achievement Awards for printmaking by the Southern um, Graphic Center. Kashner will address the artist's work on paper and the 45 print and drawing um, comprising MAM's um, significant collection. So it's going to be happening at the Missouri Museum starting tomorrow night at 7 p.m. And nothing is more exciting than a lecture about art. So sometimes it's always nice to look at art, but it's always nice to have artists who people and the experts kind of explain of what art means to them and what they get out of the art in their own, own ways as well. But of course, if you're interested in doing some live jazz, Plonk is doing some live jazz tomorrow night. Um, also, they have karaoke at the Sunrise Saloon and they have karaoke at the Dark Horse. So all, bo all sorts of wonderful things happening for your Thursday night. But if you aren't going to go out and do anything, why not stay at home and watch some of our wonderful new programs that are going to be happening on MCAT. So without further ado, um, here's some um, programs that are going to be airing on MCAT, which include Missoula Out and About with our host Joel Baird. Um, he's the general manager here, but he also hosts an Out and About show. You got pr uh, the President Lecture Series. Uh, they are doing. They had a seminar, which we covered. Um, there's also Fusion. We, we did a Fusion concert uh, last February, and it's basically the whole idea of Fusion concert is a musical concert with uh, the University of Montana Music Department where they play music in a constant motion, so you never have a break between each set. So all the music interblends together in a wonderful performance, and it'll be airing on MCAT this week as well. Ballet Beyond Borders continues this week as well with part five. And of course, you got the Wilderness Issues Lecture Series kicking off this week as well on MCAT's channel 189. So here are all your 189 programs. And when I come back, I'll tell you a little, just a couple more MCAT things. Why not? Soak the diaper after it had been rinsed off the diaper pail. Spread it. And then do this. Yeah. And then. Of course, that took a toll on her hands. Yeah. That coarse soap took a toll on them. Yeah. And to hang them out with all the soot, smoke, and ashes, a lot of the ladies had to have dryers. Not electric, but clotheslines, ropes. Up usually in the attic of the house. Oh, I see. Or a rack someplace. Yeah. So that's what I say, you know. This is supposed to be a man's place, you know. Look at me, God. My, yeah, I'm a strong old guy. How tough am I? <laughs> and then you've got this poor woman who does all this stuff equally as challenging as those guys, but you never hear anything from them. Now, to get an idea how hardy these workers were, they had the first of these steam locomotives. There was two of them brought in from Lima, Ohio. Brought into our machine shop down here, totally dismantled. And they had to put them together? Black, black people were like so proud of these professionals. Um, they would cut them slack. <laughs> you know, if they were super critical of them, well, you just have to do that because you're professional, uh, but I'm real. Uh, it was that kind of, of thing, but we know we can come to you when we need help when we need services that we can't get anywhere else. We know that you're going to be the voice that leads us. I mean, that's the way life operated in South Carolina, especially around uh, in the 1930s with Matilda Evans um, and, and her cohort. Now, initially, black doctors were very suspicious of this black woman doctor. Uh, it wasn't love at first sight. It's like, how is she going to fit in?
And it was a pretty good sized dam too. It was about 40 feet high. Had a rudimentary fish ladder. Uh, it had a fairly efficient and fairly large hydroelectric generator on there. Well, by the, by the 1930s, the, the mines had gone bust and the miners had all left and the dam was still in the river. And uh, it mostly blocked the migration of summer Chinook salmon, steelhead, and sockeye up here to the Sawtooth Valley. So in 1935, in what was the very first Environmental Restoration Act that I know of that occurred in the state of Idaho and perhaps in the West, the locals who um, didn't like the fact that the dam had blocked off the salmon runs and the miners had walked off and left, it dynamited that dam and restored the free-flowing character of the river and they restored the sockeye and chinook salmon to the upper Stanley Basin there. But of course, uh, <laughs> dynamite doesn't really fix everybody's problems nowadays. So uh, those are some of the new programs that are gonna be airing on MCAT. I want you guys to know that uh, if you're interested in watching more of my show and more of those fun clips that I show you, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice for me to write out twice. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, um, Wake Up Missoula. You go to also like me on Facebook, Wake Up Missoula, and of course, Twitter, which is at Wake Up Missoula. All sorts of wonderful ways just to like me on Wake Up Missoula. Um, but also um, MCAT.org, I just want to remind you all that MCAT.org is your source for everything uh, Missoula media. Uh, if you're interested in learning about lectures, seminars, more government, civic, rallies, groups, blah, 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 all sorts of wonderful things, this is your website to go to. You can either click on channel 189 or 190. You can watch it live on our website. If you don't even have MCAT as a channel and you're watching this on YouTube, like a like a champ, uh, <laughs> like a hero, uh, you can go on our website, um, stream it there. You can also uh, watch our video on demand. Um, usually, um, Wake Up Missoula is on video on demand, and it usually is up to date. So you can watch the more recent up to date Wake Up Missoula on your website. Um, you just have to click on the link, and you're there and good to go. But once again. It is Wednesday, and every Wednesday um, at MCAT, we have orientation at 5.30 p.m. 5.30 p.m. is your orientation at MCAT. If you are interested in learning about media or getting a nice uh, foot or a leg up and uh, or use MCAT as a stepping stone into getting some television medium, um, you can rent equipment from MCAT. Camera equipment, you can do some editing here. We'll show you how to edit. We'll show you how to film. We'll show you to do all sorts of wonderful things in terms of broadcast communication type things. So without further ado, that's all I needed to say. Um, Saturday is our Saturday drop-ins every single Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m. Once again, I just want to remind you that during spring break, we're doing a spring flicks camp from March 26th through the 30th. It's Monday through Friday, and it's a good replacement for school because the kids will be out of school that week, and it's a good time to for kids to hang out, make movies, play some games. It's from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., and we have some pre-care that's available for some kids. It's $150, which usually amounts to $30 a day. So $30 for a whole day, seven hours, just to look after your kids f uh, while, you're, while you guys are at work. So... Um, yeah, I mean, you can sign up by logging on to MCAT.org. I think that's it. That's it. That's it. I'm done. Th thanks, guys. Um, be sure to subscribe to Graham Martin's YouTube channel where you can watch more behind the basketball. Um, we only we do have another uh, episode. It's going to be an epilogue episode uh, following all the basketball stuff. So um, be sure to watch out for that. I'll be showing that on MCAT this Friday. I'm going to show you another Flagship Friday video of the week, or am I? But I'm going to show you a video that uh, a bunch of kids helped shoot and produce um, from last Saturday's Saturday drop-in. So Without further ado, thanks for joining me, and for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph.